Well, believe it or not, it's not yet time for lunch. The only thing worse than speaking after lunch when everyone has a food coma. Yeah, okay. It's before lunch, but please stick with me. I have to compliment the people who organize this event because Drishti's presentation and mine are very connected. I compliment them on hooking our, uh, or placing our presentations back to back. So in the next 20 minutes or so, we, you and I are gonna explore how we can grow our community, the OSM community, not only today, but make an investment that will fuel the growth in the future by working with higher education communities. This talk is broken down into three sections, why, why, and how. So why from the OpenStreetMap community? Why should we wanna work with higher education communities? Why from the higher education communities? Why should they wanna work with us? And finally, how? Which you've already heard some of that from Drishti, but some practical lessons learned that I've discovered by working with these communities, these colleges, universities, professors, and students. So first, why, from our perspective? Is it because, as George Mallory infamously said about Everest, simply because it's there? In other words, this is yet another group of people that we should, could, and as you heard from Dristy, we already are reaching out to, or is there something special about this group? What do you think? Anyone? Dale? If you don't say anything, I'll call on you. <laughs> and we won't get to lunch. I think there's something special be beyond the numbers that this community, the higher education community, can bring to our community. Now, to illustrate that, I'd like you to take a little journey with me to a long, long time ago, a galaxy far, far away. Believe it or not, even I was once a student. I, I consider myself a lifelong student. So I was, I was actually enrolled in a university at one time or two. Now, to tell you, how, show you how long ago this was, this product was introduced when I entered university. This original Macintosh, shown there running a very early version of JASM. Okay. <laughs> now the reason I use this example to illustrate my advanced age is because my university signed an agreement with Apple Computer that allowed us students to purchase these Macintoshes for a tremendous discount. Now why would they do this? A fantastic product was fa selling fairly well. Why, why cut the price? Market penetration, anyone else? You get to lunch faster if you. <laughs> exactly. If people will use a product, a software, some data, in school, then they'll go out into the real world and the boss says, hey, Mike, we got this problem. What do you think we should do? Buy a Macintosh. Or, hey, Mike, what, we have this problem. What do we do? You need to use OpenStreetMap data. And you may give back to the community as well. So we're not selling anything, but there's a lot of other examples of we just had the Republican convention, we're gonna have the Democratic convention. Both the Republican and Democrats have young Republicans, young Democrats. The Sierra Club has a student organization. Now maybe these organizations are simply looking to boost their numbers. Students vote, they can attend rallies, write letters, but maybe they're developing the future leadership of their parent organizations. So I think the OpenStreetMap can benefit from both the product side, obviously the data is free, we can't discount it anymore, but 
we want to promote its use and hopefully then people will give back to the community as well as develop future leaders of our community. What wonderful yet unknown things will the students of today do with OpenStreetMap tomorrow? Or maybe I should say, what wonderful things will the students of today do with OpenStreetMap today? Think about all the wonderful things students have done. You heard from Bill Gates earlier. Bill dropped out of Harvard to create a little company in this part of the country called Microsoft. You might have heard of him. Steve Jobs, it's a couple years after dropping out of Reed College to create Apple Computer. Elon Musk dropped out of a PhD program at Stanford to create Zip2, which he sold to create PayPal, which he sold to create SpaceX and Tesla and Solar City. And Steve jo uh, Steve Coast was a student when he created OSM. Not advocating that anyone drop out of school, but if they do, or if they graduate, we want them to be part of our community. I'd like to claim that I sat down a couple years ago and thought this all out in such a logical fashion as I've outlined today and made a decision that reaching out to the higher education community was a good thing. I wouldn't have done it in that fashion. So I wasn't that, I didn't plan things out that thoroughly. I made my first edit to OpenStreetMap in 2009. I didn't have a GIF of that, so this will have to do. Uh, that was in Potlatch. Graduated to Potlatch 2, eventually to JASM. But I never really got involved in the community, either uh, as a participant uh, beyond making edits or as in building the community. And then about a year ago, the gauntlet was thrown down, a challenge. I don't know if that, uh, that's, throwing the gauntlet down is kind of an idiom in American English, meaning someone gives you a challenge. Uh, Drishti talked about GeoWeek. So I was on the uh, technical advisory panel to Colorado State University in their geospatial centroid, sitting around planning the week's events, and Professor Linda Maturi, Maturi said, we're going to have a mapathon. And you ever, you ever get that feeling when you, know, you feel that you are an expert on something, you're passionate about something, and someone else brings up the topic, you've, you, you've got to open your mouth, you've got to say something. <laughs> so I ended up co-leading that event. You know, always when, when it came to organizing events, I was always afraid, like, what if nobody shows up? What if people show up and they're a lot smarter than me, and I look like a fool. You know, what if we can't get a venue? I mean, you know, go up to the you know, bar owner, restaurant, and we're going to have a map. What? You know, it, despite my great worries, it turned out to be a great event. We had 20 people attend. Every, we did uh, map 1,600 buildings. And I think most important, people said they had a good time. Mike, when are we going to do this again? Thanks for organizing it. And this is a map using CardoDB that I made of our edits, which I sent out afterwards to kind of keep the enthusiasm going. And so subsequently, so we said it's a positive reaction. Well, maybe we can do this somewhere else. So we had uh, events at University of Northern Colorado in Greeley, Colorado, the Front Range Community College in Boulder, uh, University of Wyoming in Laramie, Wyoming, and even an event at a public library. Uh, which, that was interesting because uh, it's the, with each new community, you have to kind of learn their, their culture and their style, and because I'd do it differently. 
that was just a matter of communication. Folks are busy, and you can't assume that because someone doesn't respond to your email that they don't like you or they're not interested in your project. You gotta give them the benefit of the doubt. Why from the higher education community? Why should they want to work with us? And any, uh, any ideas? It's free, yeah. The students need data for their projects, their research. So here are some things that I've been told by educators, by professors, uh, other staff members. They want to exp expose their students to OpenStreetMap. They want to promote their institution or their program. They want to recruit students to their program. Uh, they uh, want to reach out to the larger community, you know, the people in, the, in their city. They want to reach out to the profession associated with their program. So in many cases, that will be the GIS professionals. And, and their why will drive your how. The why drives the how. So what do I mean by that? So if they want, want to reach out to the larger community and promote their program, you better let somebody know outside the university that you're doing an event. If they want to promote their program to students, if they want to get the freshmen that haven't declared a major yet to move into their program, you better promote the event on, on campus. I put this quote in here from Ralph Waldo Emerson. There's no limit to what can be accomplished if it doesn't matter who gets the credit. Be prepared to give up control, but take responsibility. Give up control, take responsibility. This is their rodeo, right? You, you, know, you, you can't go in there and assume that you're gonna, that it, you, know, you know everything and you're gonna do it your way you got to be very cognizant, again, of their whys. What are they trying to accomplish? And make sure you cater to that. And again, don't, if, some, if people don't respond to your emails, you know, in, in two or three hours, I mean, don't, get, don't freak out. I mean, professors have midterms to grade. Students have papers to write. They're busy. Uh, they have but real jobs. You and I have real jobs as well, but we've chosen to make OSM our hobby, our passion, and they have not, in, in most cases, yet done, done that. They coordinate with your local OSM community. You may have another, a fellow mapper in OSM who's already working with the university, or maybe they'll help you. Don't do it alone. Make a list. You'd probably be surprised at the number of educational institutions in your immediate area. Now you think of the big ones, but what about the community colleges? What about the ones in the next state over that you know, maybe an hour or two drive for you? So this, I just did a Google search, and you know, th this is what came up for colleges in Colorado. And the, the list scrolls on over to the, uh, off to the side there. You know, obviously, you know, you get, you know, some institutions aren't targets. Uh, not sure I want to use that word. Aren't candidates <laughs> for uh, uh, ma uh, mapping activities. Okay, make a connection. You need to find someone within that institute of higher learning, that community that you can work with, a professor, a student, uh, a fellow, another staff member. So one way to do that is you're going to ask them to participate in your event. You're going to ask them to pr start participating in the OpenStreetMap community. Why not first start to participate in their community? Colleges and universities are always looking for professionals, for outside experts to come in, be on advisory panels, participate in career nights, attend social events, network with, network with students, be part of their community first. 
And in doing that, you'll meet people, make connections. If that fails, use your, does anyone have a Rolodex? No one has a Rolodex anymore. But it's a good graphic. Use your contacts. In, in this case, uh, Christina, I had invited Christina to attend a, an event at CSU, Colorado State University. She couldn't make it. I sent a follow-up telling her how great and fun it was. Oh, and by the way, do you know anyone at the University of Northern Colorado? Will you hook me up? And she made an introduction. About a month later, we had an event there. Right. Don't know anyone, don't have any contacts, make a cold call. Go for the department chair. I sent this to Professor Gribb at University of Wyoming. Got a response within a day. Build your team. You don't have to do this alone. So professors, staff members, students. Uh, uh, I'm sure many of you know Russ Defner. Russ, are you in the room? No. Uh, you know, fellow OSMers. Okay, pick an activity. Is it going to be a mapathon? Is it going to be a, a field survey? I use humanitarian maps. I think Russ came up with this term. Uh, humanitarian mapping is a gateway drug. Being from Colorado, I was going to put a different symbol up there, but I, I think this is going to be published. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, people in the U.S. that I've talked to, that oh, you want me to map my neighborhood? Why? Google already has it. Right. I know we can make the, the case for it, but if you say, we're going to fight malaria in Africa, they're all over that. People love to give. Americans in particular love to give. I, I know people around the world do as well, but, uh, and people love maps. But test drive, whatever activity you do, test drive it first. You, you don't want 50 students in a room and it doesn't work. Publicize. Uh, I'm going to skip through some of this stuff. Write a press release. Again, if one of your wives is exposed students to organizing events, get the students to write the press release. So Professor Jessica Salo and I at UNC were actually on the radio morning, morning talk show. We were on like for 20 minutes, we were interviewed about mapping. You know, talk about one of the whys is to promote their institution and their program. She was on the radio for 20 minutes. It was awesome. And that was the host there, Chad Peterson. Most newspaper, or that's, oh, and because we did a press release in Wyoming, they actually sent a reporter to our event. Most uh, newspapers, you can sign up and put your event for free on a community calendar. And we actually had people show up at events and said, I, I saw this on the uh, newspaper, and so I'm here to learn about it. So one of the whys is to reach out to the larger community, look into doing things like this. Make a poster, post around campus. Reach out to the local Red Cross. So I've, I've had a lot of luck with this. Just, I just call it the, or send an email to the local director. Hey, we're doing a mapathon. It's a humanitarian mapathon. We help pu publicize it. We've had a great response. Again, that's if you're doing a humanitarian event. I put a question mark. I'm not sure. I think the motivations can get mixed up. If This is an event in Greeley, Colorado. Uh, and holy cow, like 50 people showed up. Like, Professor, how did you do this? I gave extra credit. So you might want to discuss that beforehand, talk about maybe validation and you know, minimum level of contribution. People don't show up at the last minute. And where can I sign in as you're packing up? Uh, like bicycling, OSM is a participatory event. Sometimes I've seen professors, student leaders like, oh, you know, I never know how to do this, so I'm just going to stand over here and supervise, get, get everyone to participate. Have fun. Uh, and follow up with some type of follow up. Say, you know, hey, great, look what we all did. Uh, all right. See, my time is up. Any questions?
and everyone's good for lunch. Any questions for Mike? And I actually, I, I just transferred. Um, I was working in Miami at FIU, Florida International, but I now work at ASU, Arizona State, so uh, in Phoenix or Tempe. Um, so I've been there for about two and a half weeks, and I'll definitely be reaching out to you to, uh, to kind of hopefully set something up. But it's a library-based GIS unit. Um, and as maybe most of you already realize, traditionally, um, the academic interest in geospatial technologies is... Uh, housed within a particular discipline, geology, geography, et cetera, et cetera. So um, being based in the library, which is a more neutral space, which has many, many advantages. It's kind of like neutral territory, open to all disciplines. Um, how would you recommend, well, two questions. Um, how would you recommend people based in library centralized uh, GIS centers, if you will, that are more service centric as opposed to uh, for credit uh, academic degree program offering um, disciplines or units. Um, and that's kind of one question. What's your view there? And then if you can kind of contextualize all that, how do you get into this, this relationship between the OSM kind of volunteer mapping community and kind of the academic pursuits? That's, yeah, thanks. Thank, great presentation, thanks. So the question is, what if it's not an academic discipline? Do you have a comment relative to this question? Okay. Uh, and it's more central based. And that's actually the situation at Colorado State University. It's called the geospatial centroid, and it is more of a service, uh, cross discipline center. So I, I would just reach out to the director uh, or the staff members there and, and see if they're interested. And, and your own background with your oh, yeah. Be, yeah. Well, because I'm a GIS, a geospatial professional, and I was serving in his advis advisory role to the geospatial center at CSU, and uh, Belinda threw down the challenge, so to speak, uh, I, I picked it up and ran with it. Dale. Yeah, uh, Mike, thank you, first of all. Uh, we love the mapathons. Uh, so one thing for all of you academic folks in town or, or just even local folks, um, we will gladly buy pizza um, to help you build your OSM community. Um, so if you want to start uh, a college mapathon, uh, talk to Mike, talk to Nula and Steven who are over there. They're fantastic from George Washington University. Um, and come talk to me uh, and we'll buy you some pizza. Woohoo! Yes, ma'am. Oh, um, this will probably be our last uh, question for the session. Uh, before you all break for lunch, I do want to let you know that uh, there's going to be a group photo at 2.15, right after lunch, in front of the library. Hi. Um, my name is Miriam Gonzalez. I come from OpenStreetMap Mexico. So now that I see the presentation, I think I am in the right track, because without knowing everything that you have done, I try to, like, find really like uh, things similar what we are doing over there. And uh, what I what I also finding is that in Mexico it's so popular open street map. I mean, uh, when I knock the door in some colleges, they are really surprised about the existence of the tool and they are really looking forward to know more. And also when we start like going there for giving the, train, the workshops, they become so excited that they keep uh, trying to get more knowledge, try to go to a superior level. So also my suggestion would be that you try to like engage a lot of people at the beginning and then in two, three months, try to get an agreement with CartoDB, Mapbox, Telenap or some other companies to give another tool Tool, so people also can be building some other things with the with the OpenStreetMap data, and they keep more engaged and more engaged and more engaged. And also, I take the pizza for Mexico if uh, you want to offer that over there. <laughs> and uh, it would be also really cool if we can do also alliances, and people can come to Mexico and give also maybe a conference in the same universities because we have some very good uh, colleges over there that they will be so happy to have people from US going to give further knowledge over there. Wonderful, thank, thank you, yes. Uh, I've learned so much here, and that's something I took out of one of the earlier presentations, is the TikTok data and do something with the data. So I'm gonna take that back. So that's a, a good, good point. All right, well thank you very much, Mike. Um, again. <laughs>